he's done a good job at turning it around and um, doing, he's doing things the right way. And that's what I think matters. Um, and I think we're, I mean, like 30 seconds ahead of schedule. So coach, uh, I mean, my friend, the, the floor is yours. All right. Um, hey everybody. I'm Dom Guglielmo. I'm the head football coach at Crowsville high school, in Missouri. Um, my path here has been pretty interesting. I started off as uh, restricted earnings, tend to college, to GA to college, to full-time to college, to assistant high school, and then now to the head football coach here. Um, a little bit about kind of where we're at. Um, we're in the Boot Hill, Missouri, so where you can basically see Arkansas and Tennessee if you stand up to, on top of the field house. Um, town of about 6,500 people. Strong football tradition, very supportive place. Um, when I took over, you know, the previous two head coaches ago had, had a really good run of things. He stepped down. Um, COVID hit, hired a new guy. The new guy didn't work out. Um, and then they hired me. So when I took over, there had been a lapse of community outreach and a lot of everything kind of missed the mark. Um, and the guys at Performer did a good job, but holding it together, I think our superintendent stepped in and, and coached the program the year before I got here. And he used to be the head football coach here. So strong tradition. Um, but when I took over, there was a couple holes. And it's pretty easy to fill the one that I'm going to talk about. And connecting your program to the community is huge. Um, I think it's a mark that's missed a lot. Um, my, I mean, my alma mater has won two or three state titles in the last eight years. Um, I think they'd be more successful if they out, if they embrace the community a little bit more. Um, but I think that this is something that we can all kind of do. Um, first, what's your football community and take the football team out of it? Uh, they're, they're the family, they're the household. So what's around it, um, here for us businesses, there's a, there's a few small, small businesses. we got the steel mill. There's a lot going on here and in the surrounding area that, that needs to be tapped into and that we kind of have tapped into, um, being in Missouri, we all know that Bible belt area. Um, we have 39 churches in our small town. So that's a big part of our community. Um, which creates a complex equation when you're talking about the separation of church and state. The townspeople, um, the townies, the people that live here, the people that are born and raised here. I'm an outsider. I grew up in upstate New York, and I moved here and didn't know anybody. The alumni, again, is one of those marks that I feel a lot of programs miss big. What I refer to as the normal kids and the teachers the normal kids to me are the ones that don't play football. Football players are abnormal. They do a lot of work for two and a half hours on a Friday night, 10 times, 12 times, 13 times if you're lucky. And then in bold, the, the ultimate bane of some high school coaches' existence is parents. Now, they can either be your enemy or they're your best friend. First, connect with your businesses in town. So here... I think the big ones are we've got a couple restaurants, we've got the tea shop and a couple local stores. Shop there. It's as simple as that. Like, am I going to pay a couple extra dollars on Monday to go buy a fishing shirt from the store downtown? 100%. But that fishing shirt brought my face to the business owner that sits in the stands on Friday nights. When I go out and buy pens and pencils and school supplies, I buy it from Pema Scott Office Supply. I could order it on Amazon. I wouldn't have to go. I know what I want. But the Pema Scott Office Supply guy also is working with me with the Hall of Fame and doing a bunch of other stuff for the program. So just shopping there, it's different than going and introducing yourself. Because if you go into a business, introduce yourself, and then ask for something, you only introduce yourself because you asked. It's simple as that.
be involved in their business. Give back. You that that fifteen dollars you're spending on pens and paper might sponsor a kid to play in your youth baseball program. That all funnels back in. We and we have this thing called Legends Night, which I'll get to. Um, I took it from my last job where we have our own kind of football hall of fame thing going on. And we we certify legends. And what we do is we go through the record books and conversations and stuff like that. And we have a big dinner and um we and we sell plates, spaghetti, our cheerleaders get all the money. We don't even use it as a fundraiser. But we invite the local business owners. I just drop off tickets. I'm like, hey, how many tickets do you want? It's this date. It's on program. We invite them to everything. Everything that we do, we invite the businesses to be involved. Not asking for money, just inviting. There is a point in the life of a high school football coach where you have to fundraise. If you're involved with the businesses, they're more apt to help you. They are. I'm not going to give my money to somebody I don't know. And you ask a small business for money, like you got to realize they might just be breaking even and they're still going to give you whatever they can. It's easy for Nucor, our steel mill, and our COSA, our other factory, to give you a sponsorship opportunity because they have a budget for that. The small businesses don't. And if you're involved with them, they'll support you to the end. And then when we have more home games, we all know that if you have five home games, one of them senior night and one of them's homecoming, so they're done. So you have three opportunities to honor the community. Small business night is huge. Let them set up a table. Let them come by. Let them give them the touchdown. So Crothersville scored a new life nutrition touchdown. I mean, that stuff matters in the grand scheme of things. And it'll bring you right into one of the avenues where, A, it's easier to fundraise, B, it's easier to build support, and C, you get back to where you live. Churches, like I said, in Crowsville, we've got 39 churches. We have a list of them in the paper. I counted them up last time I bought a paper, which was last week. And we went through them, and I was like, okay, so there's 39 churches. When I got here, the first person I met with was with our ministerial alliance. I had big ideas. I needed help. We need money. Um, we need support. And they funded our game night program, which I'm going to get to in a minute, for two and a half years. They gave us one big check, supported the program for two and a half years. We decreased our off-the-field incidents by 100%. We have zero. Before, we had a few. So that's an avenue. B, every church likes to cook. They all want to be involved. Our Feed the Tigers program that our Boost Club works with, I think 50% of the meals that we are provided are from the ministerial lines. So I know the church that I go to sponsors a meal, and a couple others do too, and it's awesome. Let them be around the kids. They don't. The kids need to see the businesses involved, the churches involved. They have to see what they're playing for. And when a lot of our a large population of our town is going to church on Sundays. That's a big thing that we need to kind of incorporate in an appropriate way into our program by just letting them have their hands on something. The townspeople. They're your biggest fans. They're the people that fill the bleachers. We're a small school. I think our high school enrollment's at 258, but we pack the house. So all 258 of those kids is not packing the house in our stadium. They're the people that are repping your gear and flagging you down at the grocery store to tell you how great this kid is and how you did call this play wrong and that play wrong. And, and you can embrace it because look, they're the people that keep the program. Every no kid dreams of playing on a Friday night with zero people in the stands. Point number one, let them see what you're doing. I like social media. I like scrolling through it. I don't think I've ever posted as much on Facebook as I do now that everybody in town wants to add you on Facebook. Post pictures of the kids. Get excited for them. Be excited for the sports that are around you. People love it. Let them see what you guys are doing. You're going to, and when you start fundraising now, we don't sell, I do most of the fundraising myself. 
Uh, we had the kids do a lift a thon, but I hope them with sponsors and all of that. The money comes from the community, the small business, aunts and uncles that live down the road, neighbors, landlords, everything. Everything. They're where you buy the t shirts and the hats and the jackets and all that kind of stuff. Reaching out to them is huge. And you get the Facebook reach, outreach, you get things put paper. We host a youth camp here that costs the community $0. Zero. And we'll find a sponsor for the t shirts. The kids work it. We use the stadium, we play the music, everything. Send your kids for the day. Have fun. Give back. We do our program. We worked with Southeast Food Bank and we ran two um, food drives out of the back of our stadium. No football gear, nothing. Just the kids. Filling up boxes, handing out food. It was awesome for us. Not everything you do needs to be a fundraiser. We did. We sold Tiger jackets. I work with a company called Sam Viper. Um, I bought them for the staff. Everybody liked them. I sold them at cost. It got Tiger's gear out there. I love seeing. Them. I walked into church today. It's all three of them. It's all. It's it's great to see Tiger gear. It's great to do things for the community that not necessarily we're going to profit on. Not everything has to be about profit. You're going to spend your time, shoot, you might get bit in the butt a couple bucks here and there, but that stuff matters too. Do stuff for them. You have to win their hearts in the process of all of it. But I think the big thing is a lot of us look at, and I was one of them, I say I was until very recently. Football is a business. It really is. You got to get the kids, you got to win, you got to do this, you got to do that, you got to have lifting. Shoot, I'm sitting in my field house now looking at the list of things that we have to clean up this week. We're going to have a spring clean day in the field house. In order for you to win their hearts, you have to let them win yours. You have to let, you have to let the town in to your heart. You have to care about them. And I know a lot of coaches that go from here to here to here to here and shoot, I listed six jobs off or five jobs off the bat. But when you're here, you're here. Your heart's here. I live in town. I won't move out of town because the Chiefs got to stay with the Indians. You got to be here. And I think the big thing is whenever we do something football-wise, there's other than game night, which is our Friday night program, everything's open to the community. Anybody can come. Do they all choose to? No. If they chose to, would it be awesome? Yes. But they always have the opportunity to be around us. They know your name. They know where you're from. Shoot, they know where you live, which is sometimes good and bad. Um, but they see your face. They see your program. They see your kids smile and having fun. Helps loosen the pockets up a little bit. Helps put butts in the seats. If you're available, the kids are available. They see it. The practices are open. They're more apt to be there on Friday nights. And that's really what you want. Alumni. It's important. When I got here, there was no alumni association. First thing I did was I put out a Google form and I said, everybody sign up for the alumni association. And what the alumni association does for me is I send an email once a month, once every other month, um, Ask for pictures, memories, stuff like that. Turn that into Facebook posts, all that stuff. Kind of bring the past back to the present. We have a, we've been, we've had football here since 1915. Um, players of the year, all staters, people that have made it to play Division One football. Like you want those guys kind of involved in the program. You want them being proud that they're an alumni. Keep them informed. Shoot. My next email is just going to be, hey, we're starting spring ball. And half the kids, a third of the kids are playing baseball, a third of the kids are doing track, and a third of the kids are in the weight room. So we're going to have to figure, be creative with spring ball. They want to hear it. But you have a fundraiser, say, hey, this is our fundraiser that we're running right now. Hey, these, these three kids were our top lifters, all that. 
communicate, let them be involved. I know there's programs that you could like Blast Athletics has something that you could have an alumni group and they can be watching videos and all that. I'm not a huge app thing, app guy, because I think you cut out a section of people when you use an app because not everybody's tech savvy, but it's a useful tool. Celebrate things as much as you can. Last year we had a game where we celebrated a team that made it to the state semifinals. The coach had passed away. We got a plaque for his wife and his children. Um, had the players go out there during halftime, cheered. They shared stories. There was tears. There was laughter. There was a whole nine yards sharing memories and all that kind of stuff. And it was awesome. It was awesome. It was great to see. I got to meet, I got to put some faces to names, guys that won players of the year and linemen of the year and all staters and all that. So we do the Legends Night where we honor Legends, and we invited everybody. In our field house, when I got here, we made banners for the past conference championship teams, district championship teams, card trophy winners, which is a top player in CMO, and CMO Offensive Lineman of the Year winners. And we have them hang in the field house all the time. And the key is I left room to grow on every single one. So when the kids walk in, they see the past, they understand the football tradition, and it kind of helps them push mentally forward. Normal students, it's the tough part because I know if there's a lot of high school coaches watching, you hear the, well, football players get whatever they want, this and that, athletes do this, they never get in trouble, and you get all the rigmarole of people generalizing what football players go through. I'm going to be honest with you, between football and wrestling is two of the most demanding sports in any level. Um, our kids, the weight room is active. All the year, shoot, we have it's our, it's our spring break, and I already just released the time, so Field House is going to be open voluntarily. These kids are always doing something, always doing something, community service, everything. They're active in the football group text all year. I even have the group text with the guys that are football players that play baseball. It's called the Dang Football or the Dang Baseball Players, where I keep up with them and send them updates and when spring ball is and weight room times and as bath times and everything. Um, normal kids don't get that. They just don't. It's their choice. Some kids can't play football, boys, girls, whatever. You want to get them involved as much as you can. Same thing with teachers. You want a teacher to call you before they call the assistant principal. And if my assistant principal is watching, I'm sorry. But in order to do that, they need to be involved in the program in some regard. I was at, I presented a playbooks clinic in February in Kansas City. I met a guy from Kansas City who does this thing. He calls it the STARS program where, where teachers can give out helmet stickers. And they get updates every week and they offer you offer the opportunity to give them a helmet sticker based on academic performance, attitude, effort, all the stuff that kind of you want to promote in the classroom. We started that. We call it the pause program. If you're interested in it, shoot me an email, message me on Twitter. I'll send you what I, what we came up with here and for the Tigers. So Tiger pause fits us a little bit better, but I've had a lot of good feedback. It allows these teachers to, to give you something positive about the kids. It allows the, kids to look at the teachers in a more positive way because when you're giving out helmet stickers and you got a paw and it's from the English teacher and you're like oh I didn't think she liked me breaks down the barrier I also have what I like the normal kid he she makes all of our football graphics are basically any graphic that we post on social media she makes Last season, we had 39 postseason award winners from academic all state to all district to all conference. Da, da, da. She made every single one. We had a signing day for one of our players. Really proud of him. She set the whole thing up. She said, My idea sucked. She fired me. She did the whole thing, and it was awesome. She did great. Great job. But we're going to roll with that format forever. And that being said, all hands on deck. You want everybody that wants a role to kind of be able to contribute in one way or another. The teachers have their teacher or faculty and staff night. They get the jerseys on senior night, all that. We even had each kid in the program and coach, including myself, we videotaped who's their favorite teacher and why and tell them to thank them 
and we put it all in a one clip cut video and posted it and it sent it out to everybody. The amount of teachers that you saw with tears in their eyes because they were so happy that they were somebody's favorite teacher was amazing. All hands on deck. If you're going to be successful, all hands on deck. Parents. Parents. There's, I think that parents get a negative reputation when it comes to football and baseball and whatever sport you're playing. We have to embrace them. Are they going to criticize you? Yes. Are they going to say you called the wrong player? Are they going to say that you hate their kid because he's not starting? Are they going to do all that? Yep. But they'll also be your best friend. They'll be there through thick and thin for you. We we are a team reach team. Our parents have a different team reach than the kids do. Everything I post to the kids, I copy and paste, and I say for the boys, colon, send the message so the parents already know everything that's going on when the field house is open, practice times, all of that. So there should never be a question. Uh, what's going on with the football program with the parent? B, we have a parent meeting every year. Uh, our attendance has grown over the last three parent meetings I've had since I've been here. And basically, we just let all out. What coaches are here, what coaches left, what we're doing about this. This is where we lacked last season in this area, this area, this area. And this is what we're going to do to improve it. We have laid out policies from our athletic handbook that are copy and pasted in, we have more football policies that are copy and pasted. So, for instance, I won't meet with a parent without another coach there. That's a pretty standard rule. But I won't meet with a parent about playing time without their kid in the room. It's pretty simple. If your son has a problem with his playing time, he's going to be there. And we're all going to discuss it together. It works, I promise. Everything gets laid out when the kid's sitting there with it. We have different things for parents to get involved in with the program. I mean, team meals, huge. I mean, when you're feeding 50 football players, um, moms do it the best. That's just a fact. I don't know what it is about my mom's peanut butter and jelly that's different than my peanut butter and jelly. She just does it better. Moms do it better. Food. It's just a fact. Um, when we have game night, we invite some parents every week. Like, hey, do you want to come to game night? The kids are going to be playing video games or playing football or playing ping pong. We've got three ping pong tables and all that. Come play ping pong. Come chill with the coaches. Help serve the food. So that they can see kind of how the team and the coaches interact. It frees us up to really monitor the kids, lets the parents feel involved, everything. We started a mom's club. We have a mom's practice where we invite the moms out to practice and they run through drills with the kids. It's hilarious. It, they have a blast with it. They always, last year, one of the moms was like, you make them run too much. I was like, we're just, we haven't even warmed up yet. It kind of puts it in perspective for parents when they see and they can kind of do what the kids are doing to how hard they're actually working. Does that mean I'm trying to get them out of the chores? No. Do I want them to understand how hard they're working? Yes. We have a mom's club. They have their own logo. We're getting t-shirts. The, their, their main, they're going to have their own fundraising account with a debit card that a mom's going to run. So we're going to have little mom club fundraisers that kind of puts money into that. Um, so when we stop at McDonald's on our way home from a game, Mom's club's on it. If we need help with the team meal, the mom's club's on it. We're trying to host some stuff this summer. The moms are going to cook. It's, it's really good to have them involved. You have to set a wall with them. Just because I'm letting you be involved doesn't mean you make player decisions. That's coaches. But... I've had less complaints about playing time and everything like that since the parents have been exposed to really what we're doing. 
And that makes a difference. So when we go through all of this, to really wrap it up, and I, I hit on a lot of different things pretty quick, like game night is our Friday night program, our alumni association, our legends night, um, our pause program, liftathon, any of that stuff that you might be interested in, feel free to reach out and I'll send you whatever I have on it. I'm, we're an open book with everything that we do. Um, I send a board report every month of everything that's going on in the football program, how much money we raised, how much money we spent, what fundraisers are coming, what's coming, how many kids have been in the weight room. So the board knows everything that's going on with us. Um, well, who's on our roster, send them a roster updates, everything. We're, I believe in an open book policy. It cuts down on the questions. It cuts down on the, what are you doing with this? What are you doing with that? I put my coach's evaluations in there. I evaluate myself and my evaluations always seem like they're the hardest ones. I'm the hardest on myself. Um, but all that stuff, if you want it, please feel free to reach out. You're, you're welcome to whatever we do. Um, I think the biggest thing that I want you to understand when I got here, numbers were low. Community involvement was low. I think the year before I got here, we were two and eight, um, Year one, we started a couple little programs, and the, our, our roster number grew. So we went from, I think, that 19 the year before, graduated five. So we brought back 14 kids, and we grew that 14 kids to 28 kids. Yeah, 28 kids. Um, then year, full year two, we added, we expanded game night. We started Legends Night. We started the parents club, we started getting the businesses involved in everything. And we went from a roster size of 28 to 38. And then um, 1,200 people, almost 2,000 people now, I think, and on the Facebook and the alumni associations thriving and all of this kind of stuff. We raised a ton of money without having to do a ton of work because people were like, I want to sponsor this kid. I want to sponsor a kid. I want to sponsor a kid. I want to sponsor a kid. I was like, okay, make your check out to Crowsville School District. Perfect. And the parent, people got to see the warm-ups that we bought them and all of that. And then now we're returning 33 kids with 18 kids coming up from the middle school. So it's allowed us to really – grow the brand back. And I say back because there is a strong football tradition here. Allow the community to get back involved and be supportive and see the kids and see the coaches and put butts in the seat and really revitalize the football program. And naturally, I'm just the idea guy. I got a group of people that really take my idea, tell me that I can do better and then make me do it better. I have a crew of parents that are really supportive in that role. Um, my staff gives a lot of input and does a lot of great things with making the program better every single day, constantly clinicking and growing and building bonds with the kids. And we wouldn't kind of be, we wouldn't have went from two and eight to four and five to seven and four with a home playoff win in two and a half years without the, the kids buying into the weight program, the kids buying into the program, the coaches buying in to themselves and the kids in the community buying back in without any of the, without any of the stuff that we've done. So my email is here. It's at coach Google or uh, D G Google Amo at CPS 18.org. Um, my Twitter handles there. Follow me on Twitter. I'll follow you back. Um, I always check my Twitter messages. always check my email. Nothing really goes unanswered with me. If you want anything, need anything, want to talk football, please feel free to reach out. Please feel free to reach out. All right, Coach, just sit, sit right there real quick while I finish this up and on the stream, then we can chit-chat. Um, coaches, like I said, if you got any questions, email. Um, put them in the chat real quick before we wrap this up. Um, send them a DM. Uh, coach will get back to you. I've known Coach four years now. Seems like so much longer because of the COVID year. But um, – you just reach out to coach. He's doing a really good job there. Uh, there's some stuff I wrote down in there that I might add going forward. 